Hey guys and welcome to another video. My name is ERT Stevie and the video we have for you today is a highlight of the FIA Nations exhibition season that I've just finished. So today I'd like to bring you the four rounds that I took part in, um, the highlights obviously of those races and uh, talk you through what happened during the races. So what you can see right now is the qualifying session for the first race at Bathurst. Um, this is my hot lap even though it's my first flying lap um, unfortunately my second one didn't go so well so I thought I'd show you this lap whilst I talk about um, the video and the season that I've just had so um, basically I was only able to take part in four rounds of this um, nation season um, due to mostly time constraints um, not able to practice as much so decided to do four rounds where I didn't really need to maybe practice as much to still be competitive um, because my main objective was to gain DR um, my DR on this account isn't as high as I'd like it to be obviously you always want to aim for it to be as high as possible with the objective of reaching the magical 75k mark um, so uh, yeah when I started the season it's around 54 55,000 uh, DR so obviously you want to try and build that up to start getting to the higher split lobbies um, to earn more championship points in the future and uh, the other thing as well is um, to achieve the S rank as well because obviously it's, that's going to be important going forward for any aspirations where I may hope to be able to achieve um, participation in top 16 or 24 lobbies uh, whatever they may be in the future providing I'm obviously good enough to be in a position to do so so uh, just coming up towards the end of this qualifying lap now um, obviously this lap was intended as a banker lap and uh, it's been a pretty good lap actually um, as far as a banker lap would go maybe a couple of mistakes but the idea of a banker man uh, banker lap excuse me is uh, to make sure that you're in a good position if you fluff your next lap which is exactly what i did so um, i'm using the lexus here car i'm very comfortable with and uh, it's pretty strong around bath first it may not be the first choice car but um yeah for what i want it for just to be able to jump in and go yeah it suits quite well so grid just skipping through now you can see we've got really strong lobby here i eventually qualified p6 which wasn't ideal i think i'd have been around p2 or p3 with a really good lap but not too dissatisfied with p6 but i feel i'm slightly out of position so in the race i'm going to be looking to make uh, as much progress as possible and uh yeah so here we go we're going to start the race and uh we're going to jump straight into some uh, action here now because um the driver in front of me tx3 chris uh, you're going to see that um he kind of goes defensive into turn one not 100 percent sure why and that allows me obviously to immediately close up and um i'm going to get a run on him out of uh, this corner and he holds the inside which is obviously fair enough more than entitled to do that so we are going to try our luck around the outside basically, so um, I know where the latest I can break is here, which is now, I see he breaks just slightly before, so I decide to try and go for a move. And yeah, we're able to hold it around the outside, so really, really happy with that. And um, we're just going to see that again now in uh, the replay camera. So fair play to Chris for giving me the space. Obviously, you're, you've got to be really reliant uh, on the person you're making that move on to not just run you off a track. But um, he done really well there. So um, yeah, fair play. Always good to have uh, good close racing. And um, yeah, so now we, we press on ahead. Uh, immediately coming up behind Paxi, and you can see he's all over the place there. He's bouncing off the walls. Maybe look to go for a little move there, which puts me off the next corner. Um, but yeah, putting the pressure on him now and. Uh, it's obviously very difficult to overtake in this mountain section so just want to stay as close as possible and uh, wait for a move to come to come along now i think one of them wall taps um, further along and um, they actually gave him a penalty so uh, the penalty would have appeared just around um, the top at skyline so now i know obviously that i've just got to stick with him and uh, we jump back on board you're going to see uh, he moves offline and uh, he's going to serve his penalty so fair play again moving offline clearly over to left and uh, you know, unluckily for him to get home on the first lap is uh, pretty crippling for your race. So yeah, good progress up to P4, two positions gained in one lap. And uh, yeah, we're just going to uh, finish this first lap now on board.
Okay, so jumping ahead here to lap four, um, I made a mistake. I think it was a lap before where I ran a bit wide, um, so I lost a bit of time to the guys in front. But you're going to see there, the leader pits. Now, obviously, the undercut strategy is very, very important, but if you look at the, um, the track map in the top right-hand corner there, you'd assume that the field is really congested. So I felt it was better to stay out for another lap, which is exactly what I did, and uh, hoped to have a good lap, which I didn't really have a very good in-lap, to be honest. Um, the other two guys in front of me made up a lot of ground um, but nevertheless here we are in the pits um, we're going to skip the pit sequence now and come out and you're going to see the guy who was leading is now only just um, maybe one, one and a half seconds in front of us now that's obviously um, he must have had a really bad outlap or have been really held up in the traffic because um, obviously we've pitted a lap later we're going to have fresher tyres at the end of the race and um, yeah he's a bit out of position now um, he should have been in reality he should have been able to extend his gap with the undercut and that's the risk with the undercut sometimes you are going to get caught up in traffic and with a track like Bathurst you just you can't overtake after the um, after the second corner until we get back onto the Conrad straight so really pushing out on this in lap um, I know that there's an opportunity to make up ground in this second stint so I really want to get um, nice in lap and get a good rhythm going for the second stint really attacking the corners hard a bit wide of his um, left hander here a bit too eager but yeah uh, Bathurst is one of my favourite tracks in this game I absolutely love it it's such a challenge um, to get the corners right and hook up the apexes and yeah it's just a really fun enjoyable track and when you get the lap right it, you know it's a, it's a good feeling so yeah hook that corner up nicely there now coming onto the uh, Comrade straight and yeah uh, we're gonna just uh, sit and watch the rest of the uh, rest of this lap now So we're going to move forward now towards the end of lap 7. You can see the um, pack in front now are quite congested. Um, Tosio Forever has managed to get himself into P1 and make a break for it. Um, TX3 Chris is actually staying out and he's doing a no stopper. So up in front you can see Garrick's going for a move there. Looks like he might have gone a bit deep and it's allowed Chris to maybe go back up uh, underneath him. And uh, at this time we're really starting to close in on him. And then into the last corner here there's going to be contact between Garrix and Chris and that's going to send Garrix round and luckily he was ghosted because we were completely on of him there so we're up into P4 we're right on the back of um, the ART driver there and TX3 Chris now with that contact Chris did pick up a penalty so he's going to stick offline again you know good of him for doing that service penalty so we're now up into P3 and not only that we're obviously really close to p2 and we know from early on in the race he pitted one lap earlier at the end of lap four we pitted at the end of lap five so we're going to have a fresher tires at the end of the race um, so now that we're close to him we're going to be able to really challenge that p2 so moving into the uh, start of the final lap now um, we're close but we're not really in a position now to make a move down this long straight into turn two so really um, our main objective here is to, to obviously use the slipstream here to close up to the back of him and uh, really nail this middle section of the lap so when we do get onto the Conrod straight um, we're going to be in a position to be able to uh, hopefully make a move on him so uh, yeah we really hook up this right hander here nicely and now we're really right onto the back of him and uh, we're going to put a lot of pressure on him uh, through this middle section of a lap to see uh, uh, what kind of position we can be in as we come out of Forest Elbow onto the Conrod straight.
So we're coming to Forest Elbow now, and there's just a gonna, you may see it, just a tiniest bit of lag just there, which put me off, it really made me hesitate. But luckily we're still within slipstream range, so this is, if it's gonna happen, this is the moment, so. To me, he's making his attention clear, he's going defensive, then he moves to the left, so I follow him, and then he moves again to the middle, so I'm like, okay, I'm gonna try and go on the left, stick up the inside, small bit of contact as he tries to turn in, but nothing too malicious in it, and that's it, we've got P2. So yeah, really, really nice move there, really happy with that, and um, you've now got P4 putting pressure on him. If you look in the mirror, you're gonna see an incident there, not quite sure what happened there. Looked like P4 may have been edged onto the grass, but we've done it, we've secured P2, so really, really happy with that result. So once again, we're gonna see that move on the replay. Um, Tucked right the slipstream here, really game, and I think it really helped actually that maybe we were a bit further back because we got such a good run on him. Um, he was quite defenseless, defenseless at this point, he just had to pick where he was going to go. And uh, luckily we forced that move down the inside, I think round the outside would have been really difficult to make that stick. He did turn into me slightly, but obviously I was well on the inside, I, I didn't miss the apex at all, I held the apex nice and tight. And that was it, P2, so really, really happy with that race. So the next race is Group 4 at Suzuka, um, basically a one make alpha with a couple of Megans thrown in. We qualified P4, again could have been better but relatively happy with that. We did do a bit of practice for this race just to make sure that we can make the tyres last as we were going for a zero stop here. So you'll notice I'm using traction control, this is to just try and make the rears last for a race but what this is doing, you can, you can see it in front of you, it's um, slowing me down enough that I've dropped a place. P2 has, looks like it's been sucked off on the outside, um, to coin a phrase from Super GT there, so we're back into P4. So yeah, not the best start, but obviously could have been better. So we're coming here now towards the end of lap one, uh, towards Chicane. I'm looking to get past this Frenchman, I fell throughout the lap, I'm quite a bit faster than him, so I try and go to the inside, make my intentions. He kind of moves over and then breaks, so I go into back of him, he braked a little bit earlier than I anticipated. That sends him into XQ, and unfortunately XQ obviously then comes into him again push them off a the track and I don't want to gain advantage from it so I'll make sure I back off to not go to the inside and fly past. Uh, what that is going to mean though is that we're just going to get swamped down the straight now so we're going to lose another couple of positions and uh, yeah really unfortunate incident there. I was a bit annoyed at the time because I felt it moved under braking but it moved just before braking and then you can see in turn one I nearly get caught out again because um, I was braking a lot later than uh, what he was um, taking that corner there so yeah really frustrated at that moment in time. Um, skipping ahead now to the end of lap two, again behind the Frenchman, and um, he goes defensive this time, and he, he breaks really, really early, and um, yeah, I think, okay, let's try the move here, and he turns it to me two or three times, he's probably equally annoyed about the contact from the previous lap, and uh, yeah, starting to get a bit aggressive now, and um, not really um, wanting to race with a lot of contact, so... Uh, I slip behind him here and uh, you're going to see now coming into turn one, even though I, I let off and I'm breaking early, again he, he breaks so much more and you know you can he's all over the place so somehow managed to avoid running to the back of him. Um, but yeah, so now skipping ahead to lap four, now um, I've backed off a bit, mostly to try and conserve tyres, I'm thinking longer term here. We're coming through Degna, um, into Degna two and um, I just, I think I just forget to turn the wheel enough basically and I'm going to hit the barrier on the left and yeah, bit of a disastrous one that one and it really could have been avoided, such a silly mistake and we're going to lose our whole chunk of time so we're down to P13 and we've got P14 right behind us and uh, he's also going to make it through so yeah, all the way down to uh, P14 so this has really not been the best race so far. Uh, we've got Halbstack behind us, who you may um, have seen, uh, he's one of the participants in the TSR series that I race in. Um, so yeah, it was good to see him, obviously, and be with him in an FIA race. Um, the Austrian in front is now just going to just run off the track, um, obviously get it wrong, these Alpha, these alpha 4Cs are uh, quite tricky little cars to drive, so we're back into P13 at least. So we join again now, we're on lap six. Um, I just want to draw your attention up to the two guys ahead because there's going to be a bit of contact. So um, the Frenchman there getting past um, 
the Portuguese driver there. Um, and uh, yeah, the reason why we've jumped into P8 is because some people were actually doing a one stop as opposed to a no stop. So uh, yeah, I mean, still watching the guys in front. Uh, looks like the Portuguese just gets clean run off the road. Very, very nearly sideswipes him as he comes back onto the track gear. And um, yeah. So now, as I start to approach this McGann driver, I'm obviously going to be very, very cautious um, about it. So joining now at the start of lap 7, um, we've got um, Apex Callahan, the Swedish driver behind us, and he's one of the guys that pitted, and he's obviously a lot faster, so I've got no intention of holding him up here. There's no, there's no point, there's still too much of a race left to go to be able to try and defend that position, so I'll break nice and early, give him the indicator to just say, look mate, just go ahead and um, yeah don't want to hold him up any more than I want to be held up so I figure that's the best thing to do coming to the end of lap 7 and we're just gonna get a little bit of oversteer on the first apex of the chicane and we've got XQ coming up behind us and uh, again another one of the drivers who pitted earlier so uh, not gonna pop a fight keep left make sure make it known to him that he can have the inside uh, for a run down into turn one. So we've caught the Frenchman up. Uh, the tyres are really starting to go now. You can see my rears are really starting to get quite worn, and um, I misjudge um, the width of the car going into 130R. Luckily catch the slide and then the Frenchman is also going to make a mistake by going wide and then he just comes back onto the track with too much speed I think and he, he's gone off so obviously taking it easy again getting a whole ton of overseal on that first apex of the uh, chicane there but making it through and that's pretty much how the race finished there so if you look on the track map there you can see that P2 really wasn't that far away so a bit of a shame really I think without the mistakes um, we'd have had a pretty easy P2 there um, just want to also thank uh, CNF Blazer there because he made his replay available I forgot to save it and uh, he took a command and winning that race so yeah good job to him and thanks for sharing the replay so now on to the next round we are going um, into the group 3 race at the Red Bull ring and um, for this race again um, didn't really have a lot of time to practice so I decided to just go with a car that I knew really well which was the Lexus so qualified P4 pretty solid qualifying uh, again could have been better but I guess it can always be better but was happy with P4 um, and uh, we're going to have quite an uneventful start to a race uh, we're going to hold on to P4 and um, breaking down now into this tight hairpin make the apex nicely and uh, yeah accelerate hard out of it and uh, yeah uneventful start holding on to our position and uh so we move on now all the way up to lap so it's been a really uneventful race you can see the front pack still fairly close um, we're not more than two or three seconds behind and Afrofuzz is going to run too wide here which is um, not something I'd advise doing I prefer keeping to the track uh, first of all I think that's the ethical way to race and not abuse track limits and also off track is really dirty um, much easier to lose a car um, so Afrofuzz in running off track there he actually uh, got a penalty so again fair play to him moves clearly off a racing line, serves his penalty and we're up to P3. So coming into the next lap, uh, into the middle sector and I'm not sure if it's um, this set of corners here or the ones towards the end of the lap um, but TRZ Benny is going to um, also pick up a penalty for um, um, going over track limits. Um, and from memory it was quite a severe one maybe something around the two second mark so um, although we're quite a bit back from him uh, we already know that we're going to pick up uh, P2 from when he serves his penalty so obviously if you observe here you can see he runs pretty wide out of here so it could have been this set of corners or the middle sector but um, I can't honestly remember specifically which corner so heading out of T2 now one thing to note he does not move off a racing line he stays in the middle and yeah I go one side, Afro Fuzz goes the other. So retrospectively, me and Afro go up to P2 and P3. Um, obviously, really, if you've got a penalty, better get out of the way, um, you know, because you're just going to end up causing issues for the other guys. So we're going to stay on board here as lap seven is also our in lap um, for this for this race. Um, if you look at the uh, track map 
in the top right hand corner and you can see the field is more spread out so you've got more of a chance that if someone is to prolong their stint um, you're not likely to get stuck behind someone so on this occasion um, it did seem that to stop the earlier lap if you like lap seven as opposed to lap eight was the uh, the better way to go about it so yeah that's what we intend to do and in fact that is pretty much in fact what the vast majority of the field does so Tosio forever obviously we're in a race with him earlier on he pits and we pit as well um, Now one thing to notice as well is TRZ Benny obviously went into a pit there in um, P4 and not quite sure how because no fuel was required but he somehow jumped into P3. So yeah that's obviously going to become uh, quite relevant now as we start lap 9 because um, TRZ Benny had a decent amount of pace and um, at this point of race um, I wasn't having much uh, consistency. Um, and I think over one lap I felt like I had good pace but the, the race consistency is where um, I can normally get good value from the practice and um, yeah so you can see Benny is going to really start closing up now and really starting to put us under a lot of pressure so um, small tap there and tap hairpin no real harm done but it, it does mean I can't make the apex as tight as I'd like to and he's now right in our slipstream so uh, we are going to have to go defensive into this next corner here. So coming into this corner here, um, not so bad on this one, um, but on the next one um, I completely, um, I don't stay tight enough to the apex for long enough of a corner and uh, yeah going to get a really really poor run out of there so although this isn't normally an overtaken spot I'm going to have to go defensive and he's going to try and hold it around the outside so we're going to try and give him as much space as we can which I think that was fair enough there um, and again pretty nice line through there and then now coming into this corner here just as I begin to turn in after breaking he's gonna hit me and send me well obviously all over the place and um, that actually gave him a penalty so he bumped past me here and um, now he's going to go for move, but because he, I know he's got a penalty, I'm not going to really bother defending it too much. So he doesn't really dive up, so I give him the space and he's just going to run me off the track. I lose the rear end as a result and then unfortunately after a fuzz was just keeping tight, trying to keep out of it. But then he did the final contact that sent me round. So yeah, they, they both got penalties from it. Obviously you're going to see um, Benny there is now serving his penalty from the contact at turn one. Again, not getting off a race in line and obviously I'm... Uh, to put it mildly a touch annoyed so yeah I go for an angry dive bomb there and again he's just he's just trying to run me off the track so yeah pretty annoyed here and I'm quite determined at this corner as well to, to go for a move there's a bit of contact um, and uh, yeah it's all starting to get a bit messy now um, and then at this point now I know uh, you know he's he's far enough ahead now that he's got that he's got that position um, by fair or foul uh, he is ahead of me so yeah bit annoyed at that um, incident to be honest so um, yeah just going to stick behind him for the rest of the lap you can see now he's really really scruffy he's all over the place and um, we're just going to see what we can do now for the rest of the race in terms of catching the others up so just going back to this incident obviously we're going to start at that point there where the contact's made now I come back on track in front of him and he bump drives me rather than try to go alongside and then one thing I failed to notice is that I noticed that he did put his brief his indicator on briefly, which I kind of assumed meant he was going to keep left behind me. But then he goes for this move. You can see I give him plenty of space and he just literally gives me nothing at all on the exit. And obviously looking back, you can see the unfortunate incident where um, Afro taps me and spins me round. And then we're just going to look at the, um, the, I don't know if it's a turn two or turn three, but this corner's perspective of it from Afro's side. So yeah, again, just get pushed off pushed off and I, I think I was already gone at that point when Afro hit me but unfortunately it was him who made that last contact so yeah it's a shame shame for him uh, he got a five second penalty from that which obviously compromised his race further down the line 
jumping back to lap 11 now and again we're still close behind uh, Benny but then you're going to see him run wide both on this corner here and this corner here and he picks up two different uh, lots of penalties here so after the move that has basically ruined both of our races he's just going to yeah, have a good old rage quit which really actually puts me off going into this corner because um, obviously he just didn't break he just obviously yeah pressed the pause mode and uh, left so uh, jumping ahead now to lap 14 we're going to see that the guy who I think was in P2 or P3 which is MR Heiser spin off coming straight back onto the race line thank goodness he was ghosted although I think I was clear from any so that moves us up into P6 so just moving ahead now to the end of the race uh, we're going to come home in P6 after another frustrating race um, if you look at the map in the top right hand corner you can see second place again really not that far away so without um, them uh, incidences uh, I'm absolutely confident would have been P2 so um, yeah not really you know I, I need to stop putting myself in these vulnerable positions you know practice more get my race pace up to scratch and uh, yeah but anyway we're going to save the best till last here or the, the best in my opinion anyway so this is group one at Le Mans which was the final round of the season and uh, we are using the Mazda LM55 and we've actually um, had a brilliant qualifying and been able to put it on pole. Um, strategy for this race uh, for me seemed quite um, an easy choice. Uh, you had choice of medium or hard tyres and I decided to go for the zero stop on hard tyres because the mediums had a huge drop off and once they hit the cliff if you like um, you lost all performance in them and the, uh, the pit loss time in this uh, track at Le Mans is so long but with the race only being six laps long, it's quite hard to uh, justify a pit stop. So anyway, nice first sector, out of Tetra Rouge, and down onto the mole sand. Um, coming to the end of lap two, um, just uh, rejoining up the, going through Porsche curves, I love this section of the track here. Um, Creaser is closed uh, right up um, towards the end. Uh, we don't quite get this last corner here. Um, leaving the section right, we run too wide, can't carry uh, the speed out uh, and straighten the car up to start to pick up speed again. And then going into four chicanes, we're just going to go way too deep. And uh, yeah, that gave us a small penalty, um, less than a second uh, for memory. So um, obviously we're going to lose um, P1 decrease, so we're going to serve that after the um, first Molsan chicane, which we've moved to now. So that's Creaser through into the lead. So the main aim at this point is uh, we've got quite a good gap to P3 and um, I just want to stay uh, close with Creaser really. Um, this lobby was worth more than 2,400 points which is obviously a, a really good haul. So uh, yeah, just trying to get a good result from this race. Moving ahead now to lap 5 and we've stayed more or less within a second of Creaser the entire race. Um, on lap 4 we both got penalties again for track excursions. I think mine was coming out of coming out of the exit of this chicane now if you run uh, with all the wheels over the kerb you get a penalty so um, yeah well obviously this lap we're much more um, uh, better with our line out there to make sure that that doesn't happen again and um, I've just noticed towards the end of the last lap it looks like he's struggling with tyres so um, yeah whether we're managing our tyres better or um, as it did transpire uh, when I looked for his replay footage he was actually on mediums which uh, surprised me a bit because he held his pace much better than I would have expected mediums to hold up to be honest so um, Yeah, we're going to stay on board now for um, this lap as we come up into the first Moltan chicane. Again, still happy with this um, kind of gap, um, but if an opportunity does arise to make the move, because um, we're now getting towards the end of the race, obviously, and um, I have noticed that he does seem to be losing a bit of performance with his um, tyres going off. Um, yeah, I'd like to make the move and see if I can make a, enough of a break for it. Uh, we've got a nice gap down to P3. Um, again from memory um, it's around um, it's around seven or eight seconds at this point so really the race is between me and Creaser now um, go a little bit deep into the second mole San chicane here but we hook up the apex of the middle part of it nicely and get a nice run out and uh, right in the slipstream of Creaser now uh, coming down to mole San itself So 
So coming into mole sand, brake nice and early, obviously the tyres are going off and you're going to see that creaser goes a bit too deep. We hold a nice tight apex, get on the power early, really using that four-wheel drive well and um, we've got the chance now to make the move and get past. So yeah, here we go, we're going to do it and uh, we're back into P1. So uh, obviously the objective now is just to try and hold on to it really. Um, if, you, if you have got the better tyres, I think this section of the lap is the... the the time to be ahead to be honest um, because obviously you've got much more corner and you haven't got the long straights of a mole sand to deal with so a little bit deep there um, into um, Indianapolis uh, mess up the gear changes there completely but again just looking for a really good exit and good drive out of this corner which we're able to do and that should mean that um, we're going to hold our position to the uh, Porsche curve so it's going to be really important now to uh, not make a mistake and carry good speed through these to try and build the advantage up as we head into the start of the last lap. So you're going to see this time on the left-hander exit and we get, we get the line that we should have got on the first lap and we, we've now got a nice little gap to Creaser. Um, he's out of slipstream range at this point, so providing I don't make any, um, any big mistakes, um, we're in a strong position to win, uh, he says, as he goes deep into the uh, first apex of that chicane there. Um, so yeah, starting the last lap now and uh, yeah, just going to try and bring it home really. Um, So we took that first chicane there really, really nicely. Uh, coming into the second chicane here uh, before Tetra Rouge. And I'm just going to completely underestimate the grip I have available and go off a track and uh, obviously checking behind me what's happened to Creaser. And uh, he made the exact same mistake. Um, so uh, yeah, both of us now starting to really feel the effects of a tyre wear as we again head on the long run down the Molsan. So we move ahead now to the end of the final lap. Uh, rejoining at the Porsche Curves and the, the gap has extended uh, quite substantially at this point. It's up to between four and five seconds. So um, yeah, just taking it nice and easy now. Just making sure I don't get any silly penalties, uh, anything like that. And uh, yeah, I love this combination. I love Group 1 at Le Mans. Uh, really seems to suit me really well, and um, yeah, we're gonna get home, we're gonna uh, get the win in this race and bring home uh, 2,404 points, which today is my best uh, points haul from an FIA race. So yeah, really, really happy with that, and a nice way to end the uh, season actually. So yeah, and then I just wanted to bring you uh, this footage here um, on this account. I uh, did one race on the manufacturer series um, in which I picked Lexus uh, which is why Lexus was my go-to car in both the race at Mount Panorama and at um, Red Bull so similar sort of story again not too much practice um, not hours and hours of it at least anyway and um, yeah P4 which was a good qualifying and um, bit similar to the um, the last two races no major drama at the start and we're going to hold on to our position there p4 so moving further ahead on lap one you're going to see um, p2 and p3 are starting a battle so we're thinking let's get st stuck in with this as well why not so the british driver in the super there he's looking all over the back of the ft1 looking what way he can go so he goes towards the inside the spanish driver in the ft1 stays left we're going to follow him on the left see if we can hold it around the outside here no contact at all between us there and we make the move stick so fair play to the British guy there he could have run me out wide or there could have been contact there but really good close race and so good driving by both of us I would say there uh, now coming up behind the Spanish drivers we go through the long technical corners that uh, end the lap here at Fuji um, and uh, yeah just looking to make sure that uh, I'm pretty close to the back of him as we start the next lap and uh, make good use of a slipstream and the good mid-range grunt that the Lexus has got to try and get a move done into turn one. So long, long straight here, obviously, 
coming up to start lap two now and uh yeah we're going to be looking to make a move here now so the ft1 goes defensive and then kind of stops moving so we think okay thanks very much we'll have that inside line look for our brake marker around that point there hit the brakes hard make sure we hit the apex nice and tight and we get the job done up into p2 and uh that is pretty much how the race finished there so uh yeah finished p2 um behind the Russian driver there, Shrep GT, in the 911. And that was our only manufacturer's race at Fuji that we did on this account. So yeah, nice result there. Looking back on the uh, results now from the nation's races that we've just covered earlier, um, at Mount Panorama, that P2 secured us eight, uh, 1,855 points. Then all the way along to round seven, um, the Group 4 race at Suzuka and the Alpha, we only managed to achieve 1,318 points after that disappointing race there. Um, then at Red Bull Ring, the Group 3 race, after the incidences, we only picked up 1,635. But then over to Le Mans, we had a great result, obviously picking up that win in the Group 1 race, and uh, we picked up 2,404 points. So overall, a pretty decent season, I'd say. P14 in the UK, 75th in the EU. Um, I'm pretty happy with that considering that um, I only did the four rounds and only had one pop at each round. Uh, some of them with not much practice really. So uh, like I said earlier at the start of the video, my main aim was to achieve S rank and to gain DR. Uh, we've been able to do that over the course of the season. Still need to um, work on increasing my DR further to make sure I can get into the higher split lobbies and earn more points. Um, but yeah, um, making good progress, pretty happy. Obviously, it was really nice to end the season with that uh, victory at Le Mans and that puts us in good stead for the races ahead. So previously in the past, I would say I focus more on league racing. I tend to enjoy the longer races that league racing can offer you. Um, the FIA formats, I like the qualifying format, but I don't like the race format. For me, the races are far too short. But um, looking ahead for the future, um, now I'm part of the um, ERT esports team. Um, I think um, my focus is going to shift more to FIA races um, so I can represent the team well and try and do, um, achieve the best results that I can for the team. So uh, yeah, I'm sure you're going to see me uh, competing more and more in FIA and I hope to release uh, more videos like this in the future. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. Um, if you did um, enjoy the video, please um, feel free to leave a like and subscribe for more content like this, both from myself and the other ERT eSport team members. Please also feel free to leave a comment. Let me know what you think of the video. It's my first time making a video like this, so I've really enjoyed the experience. Um, so I will definitely be, definitely be planning to do more of these in the future. And um, yeah, your thoughts on the races as well. Obviously, I thought there was some good action there, so it was good to be able to uh, share that with you guys. And uh, yeah, once again, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Take care. Cheers.